let's just so whatever. It's going to be more of pressure. pressure. There's no smooth feet for the 1181. Oh, okay. That's one of, because it's just a walking foot, right. it has to grab How? a little bit. Like this, since it's a needle feed, the needle stays in the fabric while it's feeding. It can have some smooth feet. Okay. They don't make smooth zipper feet. I don't know why. Huh. But they do make um, uh, the, the foot that comes with the machine is completely smooth okay. because it's feeding with the needle. Oh, okay. Um, but there's other machines that similar like systems that do have a little bit of grooves on them, so okay. they won't. The grooves unfortunately mark up a little bit. And yeah. The thicker yeah. you go, yeah. But I mean, actually tearing okay. the the vinyl well, stuff. So we well, we played around well, with the yeah. pressure, but yeah. we couldn't get it right. Okay. Yeah. So we'll keep moving. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll play. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So Steve. yeah, Appreciate if you need it. me, let me know. I'm gonna just pack this up and see if I can ship this to. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be sh discussing the different types of Juki machines. Um, in this video I demo a few machines. I do not demo the 1181N because if you've watched my channel, I demo it all the time, all day, every day. Um, please keep in mind that this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I am not saying you should buy your sewing machine with Steve from Sewing Gold, who we filmed with but he's a great resource. I have not personally purchased a machine from him, but I have purchased some parts from him and he was wonderful to work with and I've heard a lot of great things about him. So if you are looking for someone, you could try him, just saying. Um, if you have any recommendations from people that you've purchased from, feel free to leave a link down below. I think it's great for people to have resources and I'd love for this video to be one source where people can go to to find answers for which machine is right for them. Um, based on what I played with, um, I don't know that I would recommend the 8700H or the 8700 for everyone. If you do light sewing but you need a strong machine, I would say go for it. Um, based on my findings, the 8700 couldn't handle much more than a few layers of canvas and a few layers of fleece. Um, and then that one is not a walking foot machine. You can get a Teflon foot, but it still might stick to vinyl a little bit. Um, and then I think it was the 8100E that is like the 8700, but has the larger M-class bobbin. So if you sew a lot or you want to use those heavier threads, that's going to be perfect. Um, if you sew a lot of the things that I do, I would recommend the 1181N. It's the walking foot machine. Uh, it handles layers really well and it can take those thicker threads and it has an M class bobbin. Um, and then the 1541 was a strong machine and it had a lot of distance between the foot and the, um, the bed of the machine basically. Um, so if I had to repurchase, I would consider the 1541, but I still, I still love my 1181. So again, this is me just kind of giving you the facts, not telling you what machine you need to get, but um, just kind of think if you are sewing with a lot of cottons, an 8700 is going to be for you. If you sew with a lot of vinyls, the 1181 is going to be great. If you sew with a lot of leather, the 1541 is going to be beautiful. Uh, the 1541 has like that smooth foot along the bottom, which was really cool. And I loved the bobbin winder. I wish mine had something like that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thank you again for Tracy for filming with me. It was so much fun to come hang out with you and um, get to visit the many places we did. So thank you guys for being here and watching and I hope you enjoy. Without Okay. Um, the 1181, I know this adjusts the foot pressure. Right. What does this adjust? Okay, so this, this adjusts your inside foot. Uh -huh. This foot here. Okay. This one's going to adjust the outside foot. Okay. So this one's the one with the teeth on it. Right. So, so that's, that's the one you're going to want to adjust. Okay. Right. So we've adjusted it. I think we did it in a video too. So okay. this one obviously is just with your thumb. This right. one you have to get a wrench. Okay. You don't want to overdo this one, but you're going to loosen this and then you're going to, you could, you could take a screwdriver on the top because okay. it's got a slot on it okay. or just turn it by hand also, but you'll have to get a, 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 a wrench to loosen that piece. Okay. Thank you. Sure. That. Yeah. Cause that silver one adjusts the inside foot. 
the tiny foot. No, you have it backwards. Really? Mm-hmm. This is the inside? Yeah. This, this is, is the outside. The outside. One. Yeah. So you said the silver one. Silver one for the tiny foot. The tiny little. Okay. Yeah, you were right. I'm... Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not. Right. Question me always. <laughs> <laughs> cool. We'll have to play with that. Okay, so this here is your bobbin winder, right on the front of the machine, very cool. Uh, one thing I noticed when sewing with this is the stitch length is a little different than the 1181. Here, your reverse lever. How it's threaded. How far it lifts up is pretty intense. And then um, he said this was back pressure, front foot mm -hmm. pressure. Very cool. My video that's where the walking foot usually you know you want walking foot for heavy yeah it's not always a perfect world where they could do two machines but if they already have a house for which i always help them from house to commercial household for thin keep that for your linings if possible even though the 1181 will sell light yeah. i did make a video on three different videos 8700h i believe and then I did the, that one, and then that one. Of course, this one gathered the material the most when right. it came to thin stuff. Right. But that one was pretty good. It's a pretty, pretty good machine for doing a lot of stuff. But, okay. you know, it's not going to sew my shirt. Yeah. Okay. I have the same spiel on the videos. I'm like, it won't sew my, my t-shirt or whatever it is. Right. Because it's the truth. It's not going to sew something like that. Right? Yeah. Right. But, I mean, you could try your best to get it to do that. But the problem is also, you don't really want to put thread on these things. Did it right. bust the thread? Yes, that's okay. It was me. I went through a big thickness. Okay. No, I'm but just, you should be okay. And yeah. You know what? Maybe we could change into a leather needle. Maybe. I don't know if there's a leather needle on there. Do you have scissors really quick? Yeah, and this is not heavy. That, that should be able to sew there simply. Hold on. Yeah. Let's and then what is the safety button for? If you knock the machine up, let's say, you, I don't know if you ever knocked your 1181 out of time, but people, if you break a needle okay. or jam your machine, I actually had a lady jam this exact machine and then she was so distraught, she sent this back. So this is actually hers. Oh. She sent this back and then bought that because she had knocked it out of time and her husband couldn't time it for my videos. So he was close. When, when I got it back here, it was close, but it wasn't perfect. Yeah. So then she bought that. So the safety system, what's gonna happen is there's like a cog on the outside of the machine and there's a spring in there and it's mm -hmm. gonna pop out if there's too much pressure on it. So instead of um, it caught knocking the machine out of time or, or locking up the machine, um, it's going to just stop the hook from moving. So instead of that hook spinning, it's uh -huh. gonna stop. And then there's no way to really damage that or the gears. Uh -huh. And then all you do is hold that button down turn the wheel backwards and you'll hear a, lar a, a large click, click on it, mm -hmm. large, a loud click, <laughs> um, and then it'll be back in time, oh, wow. which is really cool. But for someone who's doing heavy leather, I don't always suggest it just because sometimes it just pops on, you know, from being too heavy. Right. And then yeah. like, this is where this one excels in heavier stuff. Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't have a problem. What the fuck? Everything. Is there, is, is there a guy on a soapbox or is it just nuts? videos that you had sent me um, about like bobbin issues. Mm -hmm. I forget what you called it. The thing that like keeps it from spinning. The backlash? Yes, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. I'm interested in that. 
as well. Is that an entirely different casing, or is it something you put inside the box? No, we could try it. The, the, that machine doesn't come with that clip. It's a clip. I don't know if they have it for that bobbin case, because sometimes the bobbin case has two little holes where that clip could attach. Okay. Um, so it might be just an aftermarket bobbin case. Okay. That, I know my aftermarkets have it. The original bobbin case that comes with that machine doesn't, doesn't okay. have it. Okay. But it's not always perfect. It's usually for the bonded, like especially the bonded iron, so it just yeah. doesn't back up and get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it usually helps with that. Yeah, that's happening. Yep. Yeah. It's happening a lot. Yes. So, Lauren's from downstate Illinois, so she came up up here for the weekend, and so we did some. Okay. Yeah, give it some, some, some sewing. Like. Did you bought the machine in the shop from my dad. Yeah. Oh, how long ago? January. Okay. Yeah. I wonder where I was. I'm usually always here, other than... It was a Saturday. Ah, that's why. <laughs> I stopped doing that. Yeah. That's very good. nice. Take the day off. Yes. Oh, it's, wow. it's like a mini vacation now. Yeah. But actually, I just had my vacation. This is the first time I've gone out of town in a long time, yeah. especially, and totally didn't talk to anybody, and only a couple customers. I want to retire in Jacksonville, Florida. This was, it was so nice. Yeah. I played tennis every day, I played golf once, and we went to Disney World. Oh, fine. I was like, I'm gonna move here. <laughs> I just came back from our vacation and we were in the, the Rockies in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't wanna that stay nice. here. Nice and quiet, so right? Yeah. Lots of rivers, and like everywhere you went, that's all you heard was running water, birds singing. Oh. Yeah. Lots of pine trees, aspen. Like, oh, I just want to stay. Yeah. I want to stay right here. My husband was like, Yeah, you want to stay here during the summer. Yeah. You don't want to be no, here no. in the winter. You don't want to be four feet of snow. Yeah. That was pretty fun. Yeah. So, would you say that this one is definitely more powerful than the 1181? For sure. <clears throat> and then, does it sew the thinner stuff? Similarly to the 1181, or it just can't handle that kind of it's thing. It's not really great with thin, but what do you think of as thin, and what do I think of as thin? That's so very that's, true. That's gonna yeah. be the thing. Yeah, because I brought. So some... do you mean like waterproof canvas linings, or do you mean like quilting cotton? Well, or... a lot of people ask like, but I can't sew this little project. You know, I'm like, I mean, it's not. Did you want it's... me to move this? No, I'm fine. But like, ideally, those. These machines are not meant for that, just like you said, and it's hard for people to get that. You, you might have to have two machines, you know? Yes. So the, I think that's one reason I wanted to look at the 8700 to see if it sews the thin stuff as well. This bag is falling apart. Yeah. So, yeah, this one does leather very yeah, nicely. I mean, so, I mean, this is thin, but this is not thin, thin. This is right. just, like, this is this is stretchy, and that's not going to do it on any of the machines. Yeah. Um, you know, like a pair of dress pants or something. I, I get this from a little, little guy who... Uh, so. Yeah, you know, I guess this would be considered, you know, this is like thin. Yeah. But this is not, there's not a lot to give to it, so it might be okay. It'll yeah. work on your machine for sure. Yeah. But on this one, I don't know. Yeah, is that like a suiting? Yeah. So it might, but I don't know if this is, so this is your thin? This would be what people refer to, like quilting cotton thin. Like yeah, it's, it's pretty thin. Yeah. yeah. yeah I would say My machine gather. eats it yeah. like crazy. And yeah. I just want to show people that like, you can't do it. Yeah, it's going to gather. <laughs> Unless yeah. I make some adjustments on it, yeah. it's going to gather. Right. What, I mean, yes, you can make those adjustments, but like someone trying to then get it back to where it it's was, it's like, you you just right. can't, yeah. Right. No, so I'm just gonna show. Yeah. 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 I love it. So if you need a ruffle, this can do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go, you wanna do some. <laughs> it's actually a really good ruffle, so people, you know, if they're working with tool and they need it ruffled. <laughs> I'm curious. What is oh, it's your bobbin winder. Oh. That is built in. Amazing. Okay. You still can't wind while, you know, you can't disengage. Yeah. And that's why that, that I think 
I'm not sure if some people think you can, and sometimes they'll lock the machine up right away. Because they're winding a bobbin. They think that it's going to disengage, and it doesn't disengage, and then they lock the machine up with the thread that's already in the wheel. Oh, jeez. Which stinks. Yeah. Yeah. Tension, tension. That's really There's cool. some, like, my domestic machine, you go through the needle, and then you can wind the bobbin separately, or you can have the machine threaded, pull the thread up, and when you push the push it over, it disengages, and so you wind your bobbin through the needle. So that's why people probably think. Yeah. Most industrials, at least 99% of the needles work that way. Yeah. Yeah. So to replace the motor, yes. um, to be able to do the needle synchronizer, yes. what would a motor run? The, the motor with that synchronizer is Hopefully fast. 229. Yeah. Because <laughs> okay. the motor's 199 and then Yeah, I have on my motor I think when I have it dialed down to like 16 20 or so Okay. That's the lowest I can have it too where the machine will actually. Really? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I put it in, I'm like, I don't know if it was something that we did for me. 16, not 6, but no. 16. Yeah, let's see. Let me see if there's yeah, that's really the same kind of motor. January, it has to be one of these if it was a servo motor. So the actual setting would be 1590 or 1900, and that's. Okay. What is the difference between the eighty seven hundred and the eighty seven hundred H? What defers them. Okay. I know it's heavy. Right, so there are 20 different parts. So, oh, okay. Okay, so basically you've got the hook assembly, the bobbin case, the tension, the check spring, especially the check spring. It's a lot heavier check spring. The actual take-up lever, the thing that bobs up and down, because you're able to use heavier thread. Right. So it, and it also takes different needles. So the gotcha. shank of the needle is a heavier needle. Oh, wow. Because it's a bigger needle. So it's not longer. It's the same length. So people, when they get the H, sometimes they don't realize it. And the, and the book's not the greatest. It doesn't give you, other than in the specs, it doesn't really tell you what the difference in needles are. Hmm. So a DPX 5 needle is a real heavy shank. So it allows you to get like a real heavy needle instead of the DBX1 needle, which is thin at the top. Right. Um, so it's just- Different needle yeah, type. At least 20 different, different parts. parts. Wow. And they're in the side of the machine here. And it, of course, plate, feed dog, and foot. Yes. Which in, there's another video online that that other gentleman explained was the only difference, which it's not. I mean, it's real simple. You just look at the book. Yeah. And then, but, you know, if you go through every single part, yeah, there's some really important parts, especially like the spring in here. Yeah. It has to be heavier. It's a heavier right. spring because you need more pressure heavier to sew on heavier stuff. Gotcha. Very cool. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. Perfect. And my answers are really long. So. No, that's good. People want more information. Okay. That I love that. Yeah. Because like you said, when I looked at them, that's yeah. all I was told and was it's a different it feed dog, different plate. Right, foot. and it, it looks as simple as that, but when you really yeah. look at it, then yeah. you'll know. Especially, just it's, the parts book has an addendum right at the end, and it tells you. Um, okay, perfect. But it is, it is, you know, it looking at like you know, just looking at the two machines, they look almost identical. Yeah. You know, other than the spool pin, you know, this is going to look. Whoops, this and this are going to look the same. I don't even have the spool pin on my floor model, so. You know, that's the only difference that you can see other than the plate feed okay. dot. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, that was it. You can go cool. do All what right. you need to now. <laughs> oh no. Probably because you were GPSing. What's that? Probably because you were GPSing. Yeah, probably. I should have plugged it in.
Oh, this is such a tiny bobbin. That's where that 8100 EHX is cool because it has a big bobbin up door. Oh, okay. So the H, the 8700 and the 8700H have the tinier? Yes. Oh. That's where this machine is really unique, where it has that big bobbin. Oh, Even okay. Where are my parts? Someone must. Do. We we. I think we took a couple parts off this to send to a customer. Which I'm waiting for. So you can't try that. One. Okay, that's you fine. Got it just falling apart. Yeah, no. I don't know where that. I mean, I'm sure it sews similarly. It's just got the bigger bobbin. Yes. Yeah. It's gonna be. Actually, I. It's a little. It's a little in between the okay. two. So it's a little bit in. Yeah. Is it's this, in between. What do they call it? Is M. it an M class? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I almost thought it was an E for some reason. I'm like, that's why it's an E. No, it's not. <laughs> it's an E for an emergency. You're an idiot. Okay. Yeah, I'm really glad I did not buy the 8700. Okay. Yeah. Hey Craig, nothing. I'll see you. Have a good night, man. Thanks. Hi, Cena. So comparison, this is much smaller. Stick bank, reverse. Got your bobbin winder here. Thread spool would go there. And then it is a much smaller bobbin. It's so teeny. Um, but that is why he has this one. It's a similar machine, just has the M class larger bobbin. He's like, what is going on there? <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I wanted to see how bad it sticks. I know there's tough on feet. Yeah. Oh. I was just curious. Yeah. I'm so used to the walking foot, so it's hard when it just glides along. It's cool. It shouldn't be cool, but it does. <laughs> but what it does. Oh yeah, it ran out of bobbin. I knew that. We have no scissors. Over there on the corner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I forgot. I love it. <laughs> oh wow. So it's set to up. Okay. Yeah. So how do you set the needle position to down? Uh, to... It would be, I believe it's N2, then on zero, I believe, off the top of my head. Is it down or up right now? It's up. Okay. Which is cool. I've, so I've never used it. This one. is what I, I, sometimes I have to get the manual on this thing. Oh. N2, and then, now it should be one. Try it first. Okay. Just give it a shot. See what happens. Nope. Do it again. Okay. Okay. Whoops, I just changed the speed. <laughs> I think I've seen some comments people have with a needle positioner, they're not able to stop it when they want to stop it. And I'm like, well, that's kind of what a needle positioner is. It should be. I mean, you, sometimes it's just, there like we go. Like that. Like, yeah. let's say they want to. It's like, that's what it does. Yeah, so yeah. if I'm going to do needle up, needle down, sometimes I'm gonna, if I, a lot of times they just want it for one thing. Mm -hmm. And needle down, I'll set it specifically in a, maybe not quite that position, because mm -hmm. um, I don't want the needle coming back up, because I don't want the thread coming back around the hook. Right. So I may stop it at the lowest position. The top position is the easiest, because I'll just put the take up lever all the way up here. Hmm. So usually I have, I, this one of course I set up for up, but mm -hmm. now you set it for down and it should be fine. As yeah. long as the thread doesn't get caught on the bottom there, you should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Because you want to set yours to down. Well, the only time I want it for down is if I know I'm going to have to do a lot of repositioning as I'm sewing. I think down is the most useful because of 
the actual function down up is more for you know you want to just take the fabric out. Right. Hey Dave. What? I'm too busy for you. Oh, Jose is okay. He didn't call he you. Didn't call me. He's probably, you know, I guess he's still a little loopy, but I'm not sure. He's okay, huh? I don't know yet. Oh, he didn't call you, huh? No, he didn't call me. He may still be in there. I don't know. Poor guy, huh? I hope he's okay, huh? Well, he needed to do it. Hey, I, I hope if he's okay, I'll buy him a lunch. <laughs> if he's not okay, I'll buy him a lunch again. Yeah. Hey, you want, to, you want everybody to do it. Lunch, lunch makes everyone okay. Hey, you want everybody feels good, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody. All right, Dave. I'll see you tomorrow. Right, Thank you. Dude, I've been home already, huh? Yeah, I put him in a car around 1.30. All right. I've known him for probably 30 years. He is Aww. the best. He always comes in to see how my dad is. Every morning. Like, you never take him for lunch because he's a vegan. Oh, yeah. So it, he'll never go to lunch with my dad. And I always invite him to my house for dinner. Yeah. Um, but he won't. He, he's, he was, he's, he's like this antique dealer and he sells vintage clothing. He's so uh -huh. smart. He yeah. knows everything. This morning he came in from, he goes to the flea markets. He's like, look, I got the Chanel um, old from 1960 uh, skirt. And he, he buys it for like 10 bucks. He'll sell it for like 500 bucks. He yeah. just knows this. He's so intelligent. He buys stuff which I would have never thought. Right. He buys garbage, but it's not garbage. It's, Amazing stuff. Yeah. So he's really a very interesting guy, and he was a he was a, a chef in, when he was young. Uh huh. And then he just started doing this, and wow. Yeah. The people so, come from all over the world. Look, he was in GQ magazine. Oh, he, wow. just, he knows everything. That's he's so, so cool. smart. That's an incredible knowledge base it's to have. Amazing, amazing. He has he has like a, an apprentice in a way. It's yeah. This young guy, and he's. Younger than I am, young, and he's, he knows stuff too. And they, they crack me up. They're like, I just hit the lottery, and you know, <laughs> and then because they they buy stuff for so cheap and sell it. His markup is just insane, right? But he knows what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. And you're doing all the legwork to yes. go out and find it. He He's amazing, amazing guy. So, Lauren, I'm going to tell you something yes. that you might not want to hear. Okay. But every time you sew off the edge of the fabric, uh, you risk locking your machine up. Makes sense. So, and also, you also wear metal on metal. Right. So yeah. I always tell people that just because those are the things that happen on these machines and people are like, well, why did I lock my machine up? Because yeah. you're you know, sewing They the think thread there's something fabric. wrong with the machine. Yeah. Well, you're sewing nothing on nothing. Right. So, yeah. and I've had literal arguments with people before for... You know, no, I, I know how to sew. Don't tell me how to sew. I'm, I'm not trying to tell you how to sew. I'm just yeah. right. that's just the mechanics of the machine. Right. Please don't bite my head off. <laughs> but that's just, I mean, you can do it. I don't mind. Okay, on my yeah. machine, fine. You feel free. But on your machine, if you don't know how to reset that, if you, if you do lock it up and then you knock it out of time, especially right. with the heavier threads, uh -huh. right? you know, not everybody knows, knows how to do it from the video of timing the machine. Just like yeah. this, this lady's husband could not do it. I couldn't even tell you what it would look like if you knocked it out of time. You'll know. It won't, it'll pick, it won't pick up the stitch. Oh, okay. Or it'll skip. Okay. But I've sent this video to a, a lot of people and they could fix it. Yeah. It just so happens this guy couldn't do it. Right. But I've had people do it no problem. You know, that's where the video helps so much. Because yeah, I, don't want to get this, I, I don't want to get this thing back. Yeah. Yeah. I somehow, probably like a week after I got my machine or something, I put my bobbin in wrong yeah and you i sent you the, the picture you sent me a picture i'm like yeah it's definitely not right i definitely did not do the right thing oh. <laughs> so but i was able to get it out they want a sewing machine but they don't want to buy a flip it so then they're going to buy it like this they want this work aid so yeah it, it's a hassle taking it off because yeah. you got to take these screws off of here okay um if you could only get one machine, yeah, that's the way you'd probably want to do it if you want a cylinder. A lot of people want cylinders because they want to sew around the inside of the bag a little easier. Yeah. But I think 90% 90, 90 or maybe more of the people that I talk to on those bag groups, they have a flatbed. No one really has a cylinder. There are a few people who do have cylinders. Or they have both and they hate their cylinder art. And don't use Oh, yeah? Them. Okay. <laughs> I did have another uh, young lady that hated 
her cylinder and she brought it here from Indiana and we fixed it. I think we finally fixed it for her. I, there was a deal that I couldn't fix the machine. Yeah. Um, she hated it and now she loves it. Oh, yeah. But it's still, it's something that I don't sell a lot of cylinders, yeah. so I'm not like the best person to ask yeah. questions yeah. on, especially this setup. Yeah, someone like, I know actually use like PVC pipes to mm -hmm. make it so that was easily detachable, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. If that were something they could right. do, maybe I would love it more. But right. And just the way like it mine feeds, I hate. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Well, this one's gonna feed really nicely just because it's a copy of a juke. Gotcha. Um, but there are some machines that are not. You know, they're like they copied uh, a Seiko. Um, it's a small bobbin version. It's, it's nice. It's not as nearly as expensive as these. Yeah. Great machine. But then there's these other ones that I've seen that I've gotten in my shop and I've sent them back. 